Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night from the different parts of the world you are tuning in to my talk. Welcome to my talk on Yar rules to rule them all. Thank you so much Blue Team Village Defcon for giving me an opportunity to present. So today we're gonna be talking about writing Yaras which can rule them all. My name is Saurabh Chaudhary. I'm, I'm, I'm currently doing my master's in cybersecurity. I'm a published cyber threat researcher with around five years of experience in banking and financial domain. I have multiple published research papers in IEEE Scopus, etc. I've been a speaker and trainer at multiple conferences like B Sides San Antonio, Texas, B Sides Budapest. AppSec Indonesia, Texas CyberCon, etc, etc. I have a background in red teaming, malware analysis and threat intelligence. While I'm trying to pivot my career more into threat intelligence. I love motorcycles and all the types of adventure sports which gives me adrenaline rush. Uh, that's my Twitter handle 4W4R44. So let's dive into the talk. So today what we're gonna be talking about is what is Yara rules? How can we make Yara? What are string and code based Yara rules? And why code based Yara rule is better? And what kind of rule we will write which will rule them all? In case you don't know about Yara, don't worry about it. I'll try to take it from the scratch. So malware comes into different forms. It can come as a macros embedded in your Word document or a VB script, a PDF, a zip file, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Malware is a deceptive and you never know what's coming and what file is what which which is clean which is malware you don't know so is there a one-stop shop tool to deal with them all yes there is yara is your answer so what is yara it's an open source tool to identify and classify malware samples or anything it's it's a swiss army knife for malware analyst threat researcher it is free and open source it was created by mr victor m alvarez and it's maintained by virus total modern day ips ids prison preventions firewalls cms they all support ingestion of yar rules to find uh, unusual activities and matters and you can do almost anything with your rules so each year rule consists of a set of strings and a boolean expression which determines its logic so what can you do with yara there's a lot of things you can do with yara you can identify and classify files and malwares. You can find new malware samples. You can scan on live data streams and live network streams. You can help speeding up the incident response process. You can track future malwares as well based on the code reuse pattern, which we're going to be talking about later in the talk. We can use your you can use your rules to track apt groups you can build your own anti-malware product with the help of your rules so it's a one-stop shop if you are into malware analysis or threat hunting so how does your rule looks like in case you have never seen a yara rule this is how it looks like this is how it's run so name of the rule at the first directory against which it needs to be searched for and there are different optional there's a lot of different optional arguments which you can use like finding it recursively multiple threads etc etc in case you have never seen a error rule this is what it looks like 
the rule, name of the rule, the metadata, which is important so that you can keep a track of what's what, and the strings. So now there are different kinds of string which we can use. We'll talk about that later and the conditions. So what's happening here in the rule? So in this rule, they are this is this rule is trying to find the word defcon in any case, jumble case, uppercase, lowercase, and if anything has this S key, it will flag. So what Yaris consists of? It consists of three things as I told. A metadata to keep things in track, strings and conditions. So strings here you can use uh, uh, different uh, different types of strings here. You can use text strings to identify, you can use hexadecimal strings, hex, well that, that is the fun part and the regex which is not generally recommended and at the last of the rule there are conditions which you define for the matching based on the strings you have written so writing a year rule based on a unique string identifier doesn't take more than 10 minutes a good year rule consists of bytes and not just strings and you will find those juicy bytes based on the critical thinking thinking of the functions and the code reuse and the program flow. If you want your Yara rules to last generation, write rules based on code reuse. A rule which only matches a single malware files is no better than a hash. For example, GANCRAB has like five different versions and with one rule based on function reuse, you can find all those different versions of GANCRAB. So when a malware mutates or the threat actor writes a new version of malware, they reuse code and functions, and that is what we're going to leverage to write your rules. Strings can change, but code reuse are more probable to hit. Okay, you cannot use these keywords as they are preserves. Most of them are reserved for uh, providing the Boolean logical expressions, like ASCII, uh, N32, UN16PE, wide XOR etc etc okay how you use comments so comments on your rules is just like how you comment on C both single and multi line uh, comments are supported C style comments basically it's C style comments that are supported you can see this is one line uh, single line command and dual line comments multi line comments on your rule uh, Yara is case sensitive. You have so you have to take care of the case. In case you 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 want uh, uh, you want to write a Yara rule, uh, and you are providing a you are providing a word, and you want both the strings, or both the both the case to be supported. You have to write no case. Uh, this is how you uh, this is how you add text strings. Uh, horizontal tab so it can contain these following subsets of the escape sequence available in the C language double quotes backslash horizontal tab uh, new line FTD for adding Biden hexadecimal notations uh, as we talk the no case modifier for example here you can see the rule trying to identify Fuber so here adding no case will identify fuber fuber with uppercase and fuber with jumble case come into the white character strings a white character is a computer character data type that generally has a greater size than the traditional 8-bit characters so the increased data type size allows for the use of larger coded character sets so using a white will solve your problem here XOR strings Coming to the XOR strings, there are two rules. So the, you can see these are two rules which are basically the same. So if you write XOR uh, beside the string which you have written over here, 
this will be similar to their strings so remember for an efficient rule write small and write logically for better and long-term detections if with your rule you can only detect one single file then there's no better than using a hash so write it in such a way it detects logically we have base 64 strings it is used in a rule just like the XOR it will detect even if it finds at, at the byte level of the code as well so let's see if a CNC address that is base 64 encoder, encoder and you can use the expression like this so this rule will detect all permutation of base 64 encoder string hexadecimal strings so hexadecimal strings allows three special constructions that make them more flexible this is the fun part 0 to 9 a to f as you know hexadecimal they allow us to use special constructions in the rule to accommodate more and more logic wildcards jumps alternatives so we will try to focus our rule writing more on hexadecimal strings than normal ascii strings writing an efficient error rule is regex is not uh, recommended for writing because it it comes with a lot of false positive so we'll try to avoid regex writing rules on string or bytes not regex so i mean write rules uh, uh write rules but uh, do not include much regex because it will provide you a lot of it will give you a lot of false positive so efficient rule doesn't use regex coming to the conditions so most of the malware target windows systems they are pe files and you can dissect them you'll find they're having headers sections so you can uh, con you can give arguments and conditions to your errors based on the executable entry the string offset or their virtual offset their file size uh, their entry points and a lot of other things so for example if uh, if if there is a pe file which is less than xyz kb so you can define match this uh, no, ex uh, this is the en uh, the entry point uh, match the file which has an entry point like this and the file size less than XYZ kilobytes or based on the magic number based on there's a lot of uh, conditions which you can implement so why code based rules so as you can see the virus mutates and with every mutation and it's with hash changes and so are their strings so these malicious threat actors work just like software development companies. They reuse codes, codes, functions, logic, program flows. So writing one efficient code based rule will also detect future malware. So you can see these two, uh, these two programs here, they are printing hello. So here the hello is directly written in the first program, the first, uh, first picture and the second the hello is broken down into different string and then it is adding together and printing it so if this if I write this rule based on strings it will only detect the first one the first program not the second program so that is why we need to focus more on writing uh, error rules based on code reuse so for example GANCAP has like five version and if you if you made a error rule based on uh, uh, when GANCAP 1 came out based on the code reuse of the GANCAP the function reuse you can detect even GANCAP 1 to 3 2 3 4 and 5 with one single rule so you can find future malwares as well with with your rules if you write it efficiently you can write one rule which will rule them all on the basis of their code reuse pattern code based rule requires a little bit of understanding will need a little understanding the disassembler and debugger to write code based rule code based rule lasts for generations so that's what it is recommended so rules that match only to the specific samples are not much better than the hash value making efficient error rules which can last and you can track the future malware from same malware creators and writing one rule which will rule them all.
some things to take care of while creating a code based rule so compilation flags different compilers work differently so use wildcards use uh, uh, use wildcards where you where you can and uh, one thing to remember is XOR and EAX can produce different opcodes so write it accordingly coming to testing URL you should definitely do the following checks to reduce false positive like scanning the malware samples then scanning them big goodware sample if the rule matched to the malicious sample and did not generate a match on the goodware archive your rule is not good enough to go into practice because it has a false positive so how do you test this great Kaspersky great team has a project named Clara this is a very nice project uh, if you want to test your uh, before uh, making go to production this is the life cycle of your rule analyze identify write rules test rules deploy your era and enjoy so where you can hunt your error rule? hybrid analysis malpedia virus total all the virus total will need a premium license for that hybrid analysis you can do it from free and there's a new one which came into the picture recently era 5 from abuse ch product project so this is really good this is where you can hunt so what you can do with Yara again guys uh, find next generation malwares hunt for APD zero days you can monitor APD groups you can make your own AV you can combine it with Zeek to make an intrusion detection systems so there's numerous case in the past where people have identified zero days with the help of Yara rules so conclusion writing code based rules needs understanding of debugger but it's the efficient one string is not the best thing to write uh, while writing your rule because uh, in, 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 in some time it will become obsolete so always look for code reuse functionality and build your URLs on that thank you so much guys I'll take questions and feedbacks thank you so much blue team village for this opportunity please let me know if you have any questions and feedback thank you so much